I'm Gladie Cologne. And I'm Laura Hartman. And you're watching Brand New Day on Be Well TV. Join us here every Thursday for a brand new episode. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We have a fun show planned. We're talking about everybody's favorite love-hate relationship. Uh, what am I talking <laughs> about? Pasta. Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> love it or hate it, it's here to stay. And Laura mm -hmm. and I have a special guest lined up to talk about um, pasta and so much more. But before we jump into that, mm -hmm. we are going to talk about four amazing, talented gentlemen that we recently had the opportunity to meet and feature on our website. Mm -hmm. All the way from New Orleans, yes. we, our latest feature is The Furloughed Four. So it's actually called Custom Dinners by The Furloughed Four. And they are, I guess, is what you could say, the, the core team that was operating the flagship Emeralds restaurant out of New Orleans. Yeah. So it's just such a cool story because, number one, I don't know who hasn't heard of Emeralds restaurant, especially the right. one in New Orleans. But you, you, we kind of all grew up watching it, watching Emerald and hearing about the restaurant. And Have you been um, there before to the flagship? I've one? never been. No, yes. I have, haven't been in New Orleans since I was is really young. I've never been actually as an adult, so it's it's on the list yeah. to, to I get I had the back, chance to go there a couple years ago and it was did. amazing. Yeah. Yes. And and I'm pretty sure they at least a couple of them were yeah. working there while I was there and it, it explains a lot yeah. of of what they're up That's to so now. That's funny. But, yeah. <laughs> have you asked them that? You should talk to them about no, that. No, I didn't yeah. ask them, but I um, wasn't sure about the timing, but yeah. anyways, really so cool. so yeah, so these guys, they were all furloughed last March when the restaurant closed. Mm -hmm. No idea what time, when they would be brought back, mm -hmm. but they decided they were going to start private dinners at homes. Mm -hmm. um, basically, a customer who had been celebrating his anniversary there 27 years in a row said, well, if I can't have it here, mm -hmm. you're gonna just have to come to my home and host a dinner here. And it just started, it started an mm -hmm. idea for them. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the leaders, Ray, he called up mm -hmm. his friends, mm -hmm. two chefs, another yeah. sommelier in the restaurant, and boom, they've yeah. got this great idea. Exactly. So it's really kind of taking exactly that core of what the restaurant was and bringing that experience to to people's homes. So they're doing custom dining experiences in your own home for up to about 30 people or so mm -hmm. is kind of their comfort level. And they run the gamut of experience. They've got two sommeliers, uh, one was a general manager, two chefs. Right. So they all kind of decided, you know, we have front of house experience, back of house experience, obviously the culinary experience. We could really do this pop-up restaurant thing. Mm -hmm. And they just announced last night that they've hit how many custom dinners? Yeah, 100 custom dinners, uh, which 100 I think is incredible in yeah. a year. Says a lot. When we wrote the story, they were right around 65. Mm -hmm. So we were celebrating that, but who knew that yeah. we would be joining them and celebrating them on their 100th private dinner. Yes. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So make sure you check out the article. It's just such a cool story. I feel like every day I see their following number just Growing, grow yeah. and even more exposure and articles that they've been published in, including ours. So <laughs> take a look at our article. And we also this week released their pro tips. So they have five really cool pro tips for specifically the niche of hosting pop-up dinners and having a business like that. And I think they're really clever. I don't know, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna give them all away, but the first one I love is that hospitality is included at no additional cost. Yeah. And I just love that because right off the bat, you can tell these are true restaurateurs, these are true hospitality people. Right. Um, sometimes as simple of a concept that that can be, mm -hmm. you forget that. We get so caught up in the hustle and the bustle right. that uh, the, what we're actually trying to accomplish and achieve is hospitality, and there's no extra cost for that. Right. It's just who we are and what we do. And, and I, love I love that, that. they're doing it on their own terms. Mm -hmm. and they get to do what they love. They're all certified, um, mm -hmm. or two of them are certified sommeliers. Som yeah. um, and then we have two chefs. They're doing what they love to do Yes. Um, on their own terms, mm -hmm. and I think that's just brilliant. Yeah. So, very excited. <laughs> well, 
they're in New Orleans, but it would be so awesome if they were in Orlando because yeah. we know somebody else, another innovator of ours, that would be such a perfect complement to their brand. And she <sighs> happens to be our guest today. Yes, uh, and so that's a, the perfect transition to welcome and introduce mm -hmm. our guest. Uh, today we are having on our show Miss Sammy Burdeau. Uh, mm -hmm. She is coming to us from Orlando. She is amongst the 20,000 cast members uh, that were laid off back in December from Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. And she decided that she was going to redefine herself, dig deep, and do something that she loves doing, which is cooking. Um, so we would love to welcome Sammy to our show. Yay! Welcome, welcome. Sammy, and thank you for being <laughs> here. Well, thank you for inviting me. I really of course. appreciate you of course. taking the time to have me on We here. are like such big cheerleaders of you if you can't <laughs> tell we keep writing more articles about you and it, just everything about you just embodies so many things that yeah. are just amazing i think you are such a wonderful role model for young women i mean this girl you're 24 right yes 24 <laughs> years old i about fell over when I read that in your submission form. I just think that is so empowering and what you have done and what you've developed at such a young age and working through the adversity that you've been put through is, yeah. is amazing. So let's dive into it and let's hear your story. So yes. take us back to what you were doing before, you know, 2020, before everything happened, where you were working at Disney, what you were doing and kind of how everything it unfolded, un unfolded mm -hmm. from there. Yes, unraveled, unfolded. <laughs> unraveled, yes. <laughs> we like to call it. Yeah, so I was, you know, I think like most people, I was just doing my thing. I was a part of a company that I loved in, a part of a team that I loved, which was within um, premium services within um, Walt Disney World. Okay. Um, it was great, you know, helping guests with their VIP tours, their mm -hmm. concierge experiences, some itinerary planning, had some experience with uh, resort sales as well. So understanding kind of, you know, your background as well, and getting uh -huh. to understand when you guys, you know, talk about your line of business and, and hospitality and, and the mm -hmm. care for guests. Um, and, and of course, with that comes, you know, catering and culinary, which yeah. is, you know, we all love. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was just doing my thing and really, you know, enjoying you know my experiences and wondering you know where I can take myself mm -hmm. next you know in my you know a, let's dive deeper into you know Walt Disney World it's mm -hmm. a company that I grew mm -hmm. up with you know being from South Florida um, so what are my next moves what am I going to do you know meanwhile while all this is going on I've always been cooking at home mm -hmm. or with my friends right. or with my loved ones and I've always had this energy um, and this need almost to, to cook mm -hmm. and to um, of course eat along with that. <laughs> um, so you know and everything was just going well but everything was going pretty standard I mm -hmm. would say you know just doing what mm -hmm. everyone's you're just working yeah, at that point, you know? <laughs> yeah day by day yeah. yeah yeah so your career path was um, you wanted to be with Disney mm -hmm. um, and and so your career path was more in the I guess sales or customer service direction more than the culinary direction. Absolutely, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. For the record, okay. yeah. And I've been fortunate enough to through my jobs and then with you know just friends that I've made within the company, I've had a huge peek into the world of mm -hmm. Disney culinary. Okay. Um, and I I treasure my friends so very much. They're yeah. a blast, and I've learned so much with them in you know sort of corporate cooking and um, you know what those kitchens look like, and even out of you know corporate mm -hmm. cooking. And um, I have such. Um, a deep heart for their way of working of right. also but then I, it's a nice balance to see that you know yeah. have this customer service world but then yeah. have this side that's always been sort of um, pulling my interest yeah. And, yeah. and my heartstrings yeah so. Mm -hmm. so with that said so let's go back to you're doing the day-to-day -day. Mm -hmm. you're 24 years old you're kind of starting your career out in your mind at that point what is your you know, what is that dream job looking like at that point for you? I was really into, and I'm still into um, diversity and inclusion. Okay. Um, so that's something that I've always been passionate mm -hmm. about and within, you know, you know, college and in recent years and you become more exposed and you learn more things that, mm -hmm. you know, and your, your power that you have to mm -hmm. um, impact others for the better and impact communities for the better. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of my, my route with Disney. Um, mm -hmm. Disney has a really great diversity and inclusion team mm -hmm. yes. um, within Walt Disney World and of course within the company in general. And that was sort of my, you know, all right, let's 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 figure this out. How, can I, how can I go there? Because just as much as culinary, you know, and Disney, that means, you know, if as much as not mm -hmm. more, it really satisfies my passions mm -hmm. as much as what right. I'm doing now does. Um, and I think that's why, to your point, mm -hmm. I try and 
combine both with what yeah. I'm doing right now. But that was the, the target, I think, when it was okay. ready to say, hey, like, what are we going to kind of inch our way towards next? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So okay. before you were laid off, um, at the end of last year, you were furloughed first? Yes. Okay. How was that period for you? <laughs> it was, it was grief, mm -hmm. a lot of grief. Um, it, it hurt, but I tried not to take anything mm -hmm. personally, you know, uh, I had, you know, had a family member who was also impacted and close friends. And of course, to your point, mm -hmm. 20,000 <laughs> others yeah. of us, you know, just, you know, here. Um, and it's, it's just a lot, but you also felt the family and the tie more than, you know, ever than that, right. you know, cause mm -hmm. that bond, that cast member bond is always there. We're always going to be there for each other, yeah. but in such a hard time you felt it. And through, you know, social media pages or, and other things like that. There was a way we can tie mm -hmm. ourselves together and get through this right. together. But it was hard, you know, you try to have hope, you know, you try to also be realistic and that mm -hmm. this, you know, oh, come back in two weeks, mm -hmm. but this could be a long-term thing, which of course yeah. it was, sure. um, <laughs> but it was, it was hard, completely transparent, right. very much. And, and getting the final, you know, layoff call as months kind of progressed, that was yeah. um, probably one of the worst <laughs> experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's right. definitely not easy, especially when you get that call that it's final and that right. there's no going back to a job that you that you love. Yeah. Right? yeah, and it hurts because so many cast members are so passionate about what they yes, do. They go right. to school for this yes. or just something that they've grown up loving and want to be a part of it. And there's so many branches and everybody, mm -hmm. you know, is in their niche or trying to grow within the company, right. kind of mm -hmm. like in where I was and figuring out their you know next path. And it puts a wrench right. in everything. Yeah. So. so there's a lot of finality to it when that happens. And at the same time, there's also closure to when you get that layoff. Yes. And so in a, some sense, you have to almost feel as though there's a bit of a blessing of knowing that, okay, my story's been written. The chapter, the book is over now. What is that next chapter? And so for you, at what point did you decide you were going to continue to write your story? Was that during furlough phase? Was it when you were laid off? Or kind of walk us through how yeah. you moved forward. So a little bit of both. Um, so in the spring of 2020, around April, May, actually about a year. Oh my gosh, it'll be my one year anniversary. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Um, uh, I know. Puccina Amateur, which is the blog. And that mm -hmm. was just something okay. that was supposed to just get me through kind of keep me busy, mm -hmm. give me some structure, you know, because, you know, and eventually you start sleeping late and you kind of, everything right. becomes a haze mm -hmm. and I don't have, you know, I'm just me, you know, yeah. so I don't have kids yeah. or, you know, things like that. So, um, so there's, just it's me. just, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so it's just kind of me taking care of myself and I wanted to have that back and, you know, I loved cooking and I've always cooked my mm -hmm. family and friends since I was little, but of course when you're home, I was like really right. diving into mm -hmm. um, just, my joy of cooking and really honing in and tightening my skills and mm -hmm. watching endless episodes of Barefoot Contessa yeah. <laughs> and, and just all, all these other, you know, chefs and, um, you know, culinary artists that I am uh, so inspired by mm -hmm. and really trying to just become obsessed with something that yeah. would also take my mind off of, you know, kind of so much hardship going on kind yeah. of in the world at that time and, and even right now still. Um, but it was such a it was such a joy because it acted again like something that gave me structure. I can I can post what I'm cooking more. It acts like you know kind of my the earn, the inner art student within yeah. me. It acted like a sort of an art portfolio. Mm -hmm. for yeah. If I came up with my own recipes, I can display them. I can yeah. feel like I'm building a little community of you know yeah. hope and joy. And mm -hmm. you know if you're gonna stress eat during these times, why not make it delicious? <laughs> so, <laughs> make it delicious. Yeah. And so that was sort of spring, mm -hmm. um, kind of the beginnings, and then. But again, we're still talking like furlough phases, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and then towards probably around Christmas time, I was, you know, this was after we got the call, but it was, but the official, you know, deadline of, mm -hmm. you know, kind of being termed, if you will, right. was right, right. around, yeah. I think earlier in the month. So I already had my kind of wheel spinning and I had some friends say, well, you need to do this, you need to mm -hmm. do this. And by that time I was already making, you know, a absorbent amount of pasta more than I've yeah. ever made yeah. ever just for like my family and friends <laughs> and you know people you should do this you should do this like yeah you know you know you should look at this person I'm like I, I don't know and, yeah um but I but I did and I think I was like okay hey, well if I'm gonna have this time you know and I have this you know privilege right now mm -hmm. to still you know have health insurance which is great thanks to my family because I am young which mm -hmm. I you know is truly a privilege right now because <laughs> I know not many people have that mm -hmm. yeah. but I just decided to take a chance and I you know spent you know, a couple of weeks coming up with a name and a brand mm -hmm. and imagery and partnered with a few of my friends who, you know, do um, calligraphy and things like that and other yeah. kind of marketing and getting their ideas, talk to my friends that are in culinary mm -hmm. right now, kind of getting a gauge on their mm -hmm, thoughts right. and how I should sort of 
launch myself. Yeah. And, um, here we are. <laughs> so you already had a food blog up and running. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, the, then you started Mia Cochina. Uh, which is your pasta making brand. Yes. Is that mm -hmm. fair to say? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, products, yeah. Yes, <laughs> your, your pasta products. So we found you online because of, I mean, we love pasta. So yeah. we, we connected <laughs> with you on social and you're doing such a great job marketing yourself and Thank putting you. yourself mm -hmm. out there. Um, so tell us about how you taught yourself to make pasta or where did you learn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My family. Your yeah. family, yeah. Family, family, super old school traditions um, within just, you know, dad's stories of, mm -hmm. you know, 20 cousins and aunts and uncles right. in the kitchen yeah. on a Sunday when you have a giant, you know, wooden boards laying out on a bed of just endless cavatelli. Aww. That's yeah. kind of what you hear and growing up. And that's your Italian yeah. roots, Sicilian, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's something that I've always treasured and I've always been, um, I mean, you know, it's, I don't think it's necessarily biased. We all love the food, you know, of our heritage sure. and our families, but I've just literally, I think I almost feen it. Like I, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, I obsess <laughs> over it and um, I can't get enough of just the, the type of cuisine and the diversity within it and mm -hmm. the variety of food mm -hmm. that's made within it. And I think it's beautiful. I love Sicilian food and the freshness mm -hmm. of the sea is my favorite type of food. I love seafood. Mm -hmm. And then I love just the contrast if you go to like Northern Italy when you have, you know, your Milanese or your Emilia Romana type of food and it's mm -hmm. beautiful. So I just, <laughs> you know, drawing from my family where I first started to learn, but then, you know, kind of throwing back to what I said earlier, when you've got all this time during COVID, even yeah. though I would always kind of watch and learn and read right. where I could, I had so much time to just completely mm -hmm. invest in something that I've been yeah. wanting to invest in for a right. long time. And so it's a combination of the two. So learning mm -hmm. techniques and new, you know, whether that's, you know, shapes, cuts, raviolis, or doughs, or ways of actually physically cooking, right. um, tied with, you know, having, you know, mom and dad in my head, you know, mm -hmm. saying, you know, well, don't forget this, or yeah. don't forget that, or <laughs> don't rest with this recipe too much, it's 80 years Aww. old, so, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, that's an incredible, yes. yeah. that's incredible That's story. where the heart yeah. and the soul comes in it, and that's right. what makes it unique, and, and yours, yeah. your specialty. So now you are doing a lot of things. You are, you're cooking yeah. with some other innovators of ours. Yeah. We'll get to that in a moment. But you have your product line mm -hmm. and we have some samples today. Yes. So why don't you tell us about your product line, what's included, um, what can a, a customer expect when they yeah. shop? Yeah, so if you, um you know, you are a, a customer, of course, happens to stumble on uh, my social media. So it's just um, at Mia Cucina Products. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a Facebook page, but right now it is just um, mm -hmm. my blog, which is connected to the shop itself. Right. It's the same mm -hmm. website, try to make that really efficient for guests I and mean, customers. So it's, there's that. And then again, the Instagram, which has the link in okay. it. You can go in, um, you can order sort of um, by just scrolling through um, sort of things a la carte, if you will, mm -hmm. or I broke it up into sections. So you have your, you know, your long egg noodle pastas, your shapes, your fills. Mm -hmm. I tried to do bundles inspired okay. by sort of the, the COVID innovation of, you know, like family packages <laughs> yeah. or things like that. Yeah. So I thought about doing yeah. that. That way, if you've got, you know, more mouths to feed, this was more pocket friendly. Um, also, if let's, if it is yourself, <laughs> me, and you just want to <laughs> order a lot of pasta, you can also order it in a bulk, okay. freeze it, and it'll be just fine as well. Okay. Um, so you have, for example, so this would be part of our, um, this little one here of the um, shape um, category, if you I will. I don't want to mess it up, but. Oh, no, you're fine. So this is just a standard um, cavatelli recipe, um, fresh, um, organic, um, all-purpose flour dough, um, filtered water, kosher salt, the very, very clean, no preservatives, anything oh like that. Goodness. Everything mm -hmm. is very fresh. It's very Yum. sensitive and touchy, <laughs> but that's, you know, yeah. I think the time sensitivity on it um, caters to the specialty um, that it is. I yeah. put a lot of love in it and care, mm -hmm. and I don't want to fill it with anything that doesn't yeah, mm, that right. doesn't need to be in it. Right. right. Um, on the bottom, I know it's a little hard to see, mm -hmm. um, but that is going to be or an organic um, beetroot with a dehydrated powder into some uh, ribbon pappardelle, one of my favorite mm. pasta shapes. Yes. Um, it's just super unctuous, great yeah. with a nice bolognese. Um, with something like this, oh, I, I'm ma <laughs> I <know. laughs> um, something like this, I made recently. I can just <laughs> listen to you talk about Italian. We can we can keep talking about. It. I'm more than happy to. I get so excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, you should see me with like if we just some of my friends and I will just keep going. <laughs> about food um, awesome. but I did this um, this is great if you wanted to do like a really yummy um, this is a new pasta infusion too by the way mm -hmm. I, I do infusions but the beet is brand new um, so why not you know debut it on brand new day yeah <laughs> yeah ironically um, but, it's pink too yeah. yes it's magenta yes. it's magenta so it's yeah. really beautiful and it's great with like you can do like a walnut fresh basil mm -hmm. situation a little bit of like a toss like pecorino parmesan mm. butter Ooh. All the spring, you know, that lovely I'll see vibes. If I can. Yes. Yeah, go right I'll, ahead. I'll try. Here, and see I can if hold we can. that one. You can hold yes. this. Yep. With the little and then guys. You can 
because I feel like they just have to see that Thank if, you. if it if you comes it on up, camera. And just leave it there yeah. for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the weights, the weights vary. So the long pastas will come as two pounds, which will be a little bit more than what's in there today. Um, and but then that's you know all the other shapes will and raviolis will be in mm -hmm. about one pound each, which usually feeds around three to four people, depending on you know um, mm -hmm. how right. how big I our know. noms are. Listen, I <laughs> not feel only like ravioli, there's never enough raviolis on the plate. Like that is like yeah. my biggest gripe about when I order ravioli at a restaurant is they give me like five and I want yeah, like a big old like bowl. Right. And they're beautifully right. displayed yeah. and I love that, but I, I just want them piled on well, top. Well, believe it or not, that was something that I put into consideration. <laughs> when coming up with, you know, quantities, um, pricing, things like that. Yeah. I looked at, you know, your dried package of pasta, you know, at the grocery store. And we looked at, you know, how much are you getting in your plate for a $30 plate of annuloni, mm -hmm. you know, at a really right. great restaurant. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and gauging that. And again, mm -hmm. with the pastas, we always have our sauces. Um, this one's yeah. just a classic arrabbiata, which is like a spicy garlicky tomato sauce, um, mm. super like nice back note heat, yeah. great with... The, yeah, my mouth pastas. is watery. I know. We're going to be <laughs> fighting good. over who gets to um, take this off. You're more than welcome to. Sammy, yeah. not only is, does your product sound delicious, but it presents yeah. beautifully. Thank you. It really Thank does. you so much. Um, and it's great for us to buy for our families, mm -hmm. but it's also a great gift. I'm yeah. looking at this, and if I really like you, I'm going <laughs> to buy this and yeah. gift it to you because this is, this is a beautiful, and it presentation and it shows that it's made from the heart clearly Absolutely. you put so much thought into it so you want to what a great um with mother's day coming up this would be a great mother's day gift yeah yeah, yeah. and um, i think you know here mom find... cook me pasta right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both enjoy it <laughs> yeah oh, oh my how gosh fun. how funny <laughs> yeah and i would love to eventually find ways where i can can sort of theme what's on my shop mm -hmm. menu right now with yeah. what's yeah. coming up. So spring, I might start introducing sort of your mm -hmm. natural spring flavors, more mm -hmm. lemon, you know, peas, things like That's that. That's a great idea. And really cater to the are, seasons. Are you shipping or is it delivery local only in Orlando? Right, great question. So I am not shipping right now. Okay. Um, that's just due to some sort of, you know, COVID is still right. very much in, you know. You'll get there. The process, mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's just a future um, sort of plan that I have, but unfortunately I'm unable to do right now, but I'm doing delivery and pickups within okay. the central Florida area. Okay. Great. Um, we are located, or I am located, in the Winter Garden area, so mm -hmm. sort of anywhere between like 30, 40 minutes yeah. in that, you know, that radius, radius is mm -hmm. sort of that. Um, and then and also open up for a discussion, right? Because, you know, I'm more than happy to, if I'm going somewhere and it's okay with my customers, you know, bring right. bring me yeah. a cuchina to your yeah. cuchina. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and make you know, some food for you. Very so. awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as Laura alluded to earlier, you have been doing some partnerships mm -hmm. with some of our other innovators. And yes. recently we learned that you did a partnership with Sabrosa, mm -hmm. the pop-up dining concept in Orlando. Tell us about that partnership. What were you doing? What was it like? <laughs> they're they're amazing. Andrea and Kina are, are wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful women, and I'm so fortunate that I've met them. And similar to um, you, of course, um, they have been nothing but supportive since they've met me from the start. And mm -hmm. as soon as I met them, again, I was you know just like today, I was very nervous <laughs> and and you know would and believed in myself, but was was there was a doubt right because as I just told you I've never had a professional experience at all mm -hmm. I am a home cook and that's how I started this so yeah. jumping into the world of you know professional cooking was a huge leap for me mm -hmm. and I got that experience through my friends with the rabbit hole chef services mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. have worked with them before yeah. mind-blowingly brilliant team and yeah. chef Alex is amazing and I know you guys you know we are so excited yeah. to get to meet him yeah he <laughs> finally submitted the other day I've been like you've got to do it he's like I will I will well, he He's finally an submitted. Upcoming innovator. Yes. Yep, upcoming innovator for us. You won't, and you won't regret it. It's, yeah, we're excited to get to know him. Yeah, the confidence that has grown within myself through him and then this team and, and then just the, the family, you know, atmosphere with it too is means the world to me. And and again, are one of the reasons, the key reason why I got to work with the ladies with Sabrosa, um, who they were hosting an event in January. Mm -hmm. um, the theme was Sardinia, sort of, you know, um, so in Sardinia, so there's a, they are a blue zone. Mm -hmm. So longevity, long life, we are healthy. We live mm -hmm. to 110, drinking you know, eating pasta. Yes. It's great. That's, I did see that on a documentary. And right. I thought that was insane. It's that amazing. They can live there so long on that type of diet. Right. Right. And it's it's just a beautiful way of living, and I would love yeah, to do that. It and is. so, it, and it touched me because, well, one, you know, Chef Alex reached out to me because he knows the type of food that I make, mm -hmm. and, and you know, especially you know, with the you know Sicilian type of palate and and food that is very similar to that of Sardinia. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, ready to take that yeah. on. And I'm happy that they, you know, Kina and um, Andrea were happy to take that chance on me mm -hmm. with this because 
I knew I can do it, and yeah. I knew I just had to get over those little nervous right. lumps. But I was happy too because one of my friends um, back at home, she's from Greece, mm -hmm. and she went to the island of Ikaria, which mm -hmm. is a Greek island, and brought me back. When that's also a blue zone, I should preface. Okay. Brought me back a stone. Uh, necklace um, with a stone from the piece of land. Okay. Like with that. So it's something that I hold near and dear to my heart. Yeah. So I thought oh, it was very nice. ironic. Yeah. Very, really um, symbolic. Yeah. Right. And I wore that there. during all my prep work. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> She's actually going this summer, and I was like, Oh wow. Well, so and I'll just <laughs> yeah. safely Always come wanted to Greece. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, you know, wore that during my prep work, during each end of the event. Mm -hmm. I had that on to sort of, you know. It does keep me calm, yeah. and, and I think because there is some some connection that it, and yeah. something that it has, you know, for people symbolically, and so I had that on to kind of give an ode to her, to mm -hmm. the oh, island, nice. to the land, and that. to the theme of the event. And it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. They're so talented. They really at are at what yeah. they do. So and you were back there behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You brought your pasta. <laughs> you were cooking. Yeah. That was your first <laughs> event as. A culinary professional. This was your debut. It yes, quite literally. Yeah, yeah. and then I and I had because of course you know <laughs> I, I couldn't just let it you know be me myself and I. In this case, you know mm -hmm. I had my boyfriend who's you know wonderful and support for me. And again, um, he's with Rabbit Hole as I am, and so they were there supporting me, okay. getting me through this because you know when you go from cooking for you know, party of one or yeah, maybe up right. to like six or so at home to, you know, 30, <laughs> yeah. 30 plus a night. Right. It, it's a lot, you know, because I'm making, you know, 10 to 12 pastas, you mm -hmm. know, for prep or pounds of pasta per evening for these guests, plus yeah. three other, you know, courses and wanting to make sure that it, it you mm -hmm. know, properly right. respects the cuisine and traditions, mm -hmm. you know, of Sardinia while also mm -hmm. taking a nice modern approach. And, but yeah, it was all me. And actually, ironically enough, it was not backstage, like behind the scenes. It was right in front of everybody. <laughs> so, and part yes. of that experience, and part yeah. of the experience is, is, oh is half the entertainment is watching the kitchen. Yeah. So, no, we, we set up, and you are making a kitchen and building it from scratch. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah. that is yeah. cool. That is cool to Very watch cool. you guys work while right. you're mm -hmm. sitting there eating dinner. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm sure nerve-wracking <laughs> for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was, but also super empowering. You know, I haven't yeah. had this type of, you know, I guess attention um, in, in any type of facet in this way yeah. before. So it was super um, empowering, and, mm -hmm. and, and though my confidence was sort of fluttering up and down yeah. by the end of each night, it was it was there, and I was seeing plates come back empty, mm -hmm. and oh. people be excited to come back and hear about my soup that I made, the yeah. minestrone right. soup that yeah. I had. I had to share the menu because they loved it so much. What a yes. huge compliment. And yeah. it just and, and doing some table touches after and hearing the feedback was yeah. super That's rewarding awesome. and humbling. Yeah. And, um, you and just gotta had keep it. chipping away, yeah. you know? It's like you yeah. did it, now what's next and just keep chipping away right. and I can see a very very bright future thank you. for you thank you that so. means a lot to me so thank you well Sammy um, we are gonna put you on the spot oh no okay because we <laughs> love pasta yeah and we love to talk about pasta so we came up with some fun facts okay. about pasta and um, they're true or false mm -hmm. so okay. we're gonna ask you some questions we're gonna take turns okay. 50 and 50 here comes the game yeah you got a 50 50 <laughs> chance uh, I know I you got really a 50 nervous. 50 chance of, of getting it getting it right but we found these on the internet we're just gonna ask you a couple questions okay you tell us what you think. All Ready. right, question number one. Pasta was first eaten in China. True or false? That is true, actually. Is she right? Ding, 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 ding. Right. Okay, yeah, we need a bell, right. remember? Okay. Oh, yeah. We need sound effects. Okay. <laughs> Where's the sound yeah. effects? <laughs> that is right. The first recorded reports of people eating pasta did come from China. So you got that right. All there right. There we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> There are more, true or false, there are more than 600 different shapes of pasta, true or false? Whew. I would say 600. <laughs> 600 shapes. I mean, right. you could do those. Kinds That's of what I'm saying. Ways. Well, and then there's there's so many traditions in the context for each pasta shape is made for yeah. a specific reason, for yeah. region or for context of history at the time. I mean, Capaletti are made after Pope's hats, you know, so. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hey, but, fun um, fact. I'm still going to say no, because that seems like a mm. lot. According to my note card, it's true. Is it true? <laughs> I should have I yeah, I should have believed that. Oh my gosh. According to the International Pasta Organization. Okay. We According have, to them, at least. We have our sources. That is <laughs> right. That's point. That is, okay. That is crazy. And I, I, that's just more for me to learn and try now. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see. So for, for this one, I'm going to have both of you answer. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. <laughs> so pay attention. <laughs> Ben Franklin is credited <laughs> with being the first per person to introduce pasta to America. False. True. False. Oh. 
Yes. Was... I should have let you answer first. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is Thomas Jefferson. Oh, okay. He introduced pasta uh, in 1789 to America. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That is interesting. You got it right in the history books. books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two out of three, Sammy. Okay. All right, spaghetto. I'm sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm from Missouri, guys. I'm sorry. Spaghetto. <laughs> the singular word for spaghetti. True. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Next one. <laughs> oh man, that was rich. Okay. All right, final one. <clears throat> The average Italian eats 100 pounds of pasta per year. I'll say true. <laughs> I feel like I do. <laughs> that is false. Really? really? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't no, hide, true. but the correct answer is 60 pounds, which is still that's a lot. That's still a lot, 60 yeah. That's pounds. true. Okay. I guess when you think about it, so we talked about like sort of the traditional yeah. way of breaking up like a pound of pasta. So I think in my head I was like, well, yeah, you've got to, but if you mm -hmm. multiply that by three to four, you know, that's technically 300 yeah. pounds. Plus so. we put you on the spot, so. Yeah, exactly. I, I like to have faith in are there <laughs> that any, we eat so much pasta. Are there any yeah. guesses with how much the average American in pounds eats of pasta per year? Well, probably, probably more. 100. <laughs> probably, probably. So I thought so too, mm -hmm. but according to the International <laughs> Pasta, pasta organization. organization, it's 26 pounds. Wow. It's less. Really? Okay. It's less. Maybe yeah. because when Americans eat pasta, you know, we go pretty sick if we, if yeah. we eat a lot of it so but it's still maybe less frequent where mm -hmm. I think in Italy mm -hmm. you're having that daily every day but, yeah every core yeah, yeah but because yeah. it's so frequent you can your portions are smaller yeah that makes sense I thought maybe it was because it's more readily available perhaps right, so, right exactly yeah um, oh, I'm sure that has something to well talk. I think we could talk to you all day long yeah just same. even about food <laughs> and wonderful. just uh, I feel like the, the topics are endless with you and I'm sure we'll be working with you in a lot of different facets. We, our wheels are always spinning with yes. how we can partner with our innovators and work with you all. And we have a specific idea that we're excited to, <laughs> to talk to a few of you guys about. Um, but we just want to say thank you yes, for coming on you. our thank show. You. How, My can our, how can our audience find you? Yeah, um, so you guys can find me, as I mentioned earlier, um, at my Instagram, which is at mia.cucina.products. Um, a Facebook page is coming shortly. I've been kind of procrastinating that a little bit and realized that is something important that I need to do. I keep looking for it and then... It's not there, don't worry. Okay. No, you just can't, no, no, okay, it okay. just doesn't exist yet. So that is something on my um, very um, need, to, need to do list. Coming <laughs> soon. Yes, um, and of course, or email as well, which is um, miacushinaproducts at gmail.com. And you can also find her on our new brand portfolio because since she's one of our innovators, she's on our brand portfolio in our food and beverage category. So all you have to do is click on her and it'll go right to her website. And make sure you read her article. And you also recently were in City Lifestyle. Yes. So that's pretty Huge. cool as well. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thanks to you guys, of course. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much for being on our show, Sandy. Thank you. Thank and good you luck to you. Very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. We are excited to share another story of a brand new day.